I can be a Dinosaur Finder, the learning adventure series where you can be anything you want to be. Sign in for adventure. Type in your name and click on OK when you're done. Hi, mate. My name is Addy, along with me mates, Rufus the dog. That's me, pal. Katie the chameleon. Ready to join us on a magical adventure? Come along with us. Go back and get my stomach. Come on! Time to meet the famous paleontologist, Dr. Rock Hound. Hi, mate. You look lower than a gopher's galoshes. Uh, you got that right. The museum director's coming tomorrow. I've got to build one more display, or he'll cancel my dino finding expedition. No problem, old doc. Just tell me what to sniff out. Hey, count me in too! I need to find a Triceratops. One prehistoric creature? Coming up, Doc! You finish the display, I'll make you official fossil finders. At last! True recognition! You can count on us, mate! This map will guide you on your fossil finding expedition. Hey, let's find Turkey! I'm starving! We'll find you one colossal fossil! Oh, thanks, guys. Good luck! Okay, you heard, Doc Rock. We've got to help him find that fossil. A map will get us to the dig sites where we can fossil hunt. Dr. Hildegard Howard was a leader in the study of prehistoric birds. As the chief curator at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County, California, she was respected as a gifted scientist. William Buckland, in 1818, discovered what he called a megalosaurus, or giant reptile. This was the first dinosaur name to be published. These famous bones may still be seen today at the Oxford University Museum in England. Jack Horner Little Jack Horner is best known as the fossil finder who believes that birds came from certain types of dinosaurs. But in 1978, he discovered the fossil remains of about 15 baby Myasaura in nests. That led him to the theory that some dinosaurs watched over their young. Richard Owen invented the word dinosaur in 1841 from the Greek words dinos, which means terrible, and saurus, which means lizard. He was the first to realize that bones found by other scientists were not giant reptiles at all, but a new group of creatures, which he named dinosaurs. Ned Colbert's 1969 discovery of the fossil reptile Lystrosaurus in frozen Antarctica confirmed the theory of continental drift. Before his discovery, fossils of Lystrosaurus had only been found in Africa, so those continents must have been connected at one time. Othniel Charles Marsh and his team collected thousands of dinosaur bones in the American West, especially in Como Bluff, Wyoming. His fossil finding competition with paleontologist Edward Cope was called the Great 19th Century Bone Wars. Marsh discovered 80 new dinosaur species, including Apatosaurus and Triceratops. George Simpson made great contributions to the world of paleontology from the 1930s through the 1950s. 
He was a brilliant paleontologist who had a lifelong fascination with the strange ancient mammals of South America. Hilda Schwartz is both a paleontologist and a geologist who has done field work in East Africa, Egypt, and New Mexico. In New Mexico, she works on the famous Coelophysis dinosaur quarry at Ghost Ranch. Roy Chapman Andrews was not really a paleontologist at all, but an explorer in the early 1920s. He led an expedition to Central Asia, where he and his team discovered the very first dinosaur eggs. Not bad for someone who started his career as a janitor at the American Museum of Natural History. Chester Stock focused his student work on the fossils of Smilodon, the famous saber-toothed cat discovered in the Rancho La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles. Smilodon is now known as the official California state fossil. Barnum Brown grew up on a farm in Kansas and started collecting fossils as a boy. His childhood hobby led to a lifetime of travel and exploration to places like Cuba, Greece, and India to discover new fossils. He was known as Mr. Bones because he dug up so many dinosaurs, including two T-Rex skeletons. Edward Cope and his team discovered thousands of dinosaur bones in the American West in the 1870s and 1880s. He and O.C. Marsh each tried to collect more fossils than the other. Cope discovered 56 new species of dinosaurs, including Brachiosaurus and Anatotitan. David Gillette was curator of paleontology at the New Mexico Museum of Natural History in 1979 when he discovered the largest dinosaur ever found, 132 feet long. He called it Seismosaurus, which means earth-shaking lizard. Baron Georges Cuvier is often called the father of paleontology. This French scientist created a system of classifying four major animal groups, vertebrates, mollusks, worms, and sponges. Charles Sternberg grew up in Kansas and collected fossil shells as a child. He knew from an early age that he wanted to be a professional fossil hunter. His three sons also became paleontologists and often joined him on expeditions. Their fossil discoveries are now displayed in museums all over the world. Gideon Mantell was a family doctor in England who collected fossil rocks as a hobby. In 1822, his wife Mary Ann saw a pile of rocks in the road and discovered a tooth and several bones. Gideon named the creature they belonged to Iguanodon which at that time was only the second known dinosaur to be named. Sorry, pal. Before you earn this certificate of achievement, you have to help Dr. Rockhound find that creature he needs. There are lots of things you can do right now to become a dino expert. First off, visit your local Museum of Natural History and check out the dinosaur exhibits. Many museums and organizations have cool dinosaur workshops for kids. You can go on a real dinosaur dig and learn firsthand what paleontologists do. Call your local museum for more information or call 1-800-DIG-DINO. You can even start in your own backyard. Get your parents to help you dig around. You might find fossils buried in the ground or inside rocks. And most important, keep up with your math and language and science classes in school. Then when you grow up, you can be a paleontologist too. For even more ways to learn about dinos, visit our website at http wwwcloud 9 intcom Dynamosaurus imperiosus and Tyrannosaurus rex were originally thought to be two different dinosaurs. When paleontologists figured out that they were really the same dinosaur, the name Tyrannosaurus rex stuck. Did you know that Brachiosaurus weighed 77 tons? That's more than two 737 airplanes. Did you know that dinosaurs only lived on land? 
Flying reptiles like pterodactyls are not dinosaurs, and huge marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs are not dinosaurs either. Did you know that the brain of a stegosaurus was only the size of a walnut? Click on a time period to learn all about it. Quaternary. The period in which we live today is called the Quaternary Period. It began 1.8 million years ago with the rise of creatures like the woolly mammoth. The Earth got colder and colder, a time called the Ice Age. This led to the extinction of many species, just as the first human beings appeared. Ter the Tertiary Period ended only 1.8 million years ago and is called the Age of Mammals. Tiny horses like Hyracotherium, huge birds like Diatrima, and giant rhinos like Indricotherium all roamed the Earth during the Tertiary Period. Cretaceous, Tertiary, Quaternary, the fearsome Tyrannosaurus rex, the crested Parasaurolophus, and the chicken-sized Compsognathus ruled the land during the Cretaceous period. Sixty-five million years ago, at the end of the Cretaceous period, a catastrophe killed off all the dinosaurs. The Earth thundered with the rumbling steps of the first giant dinosaurs during the Jurassic period, from 208 to 145 million years ago. Giant Ultrasaurus, Vicious Allosaurus, and Armored Stegosaurus roamed the land. Jurassic, Triassic. The age of dinosaurs began during the Triassic period, 245 to 208 million years ago. From the tiny Mosaurus to the large Platyosaurus, dinosaurs began to roam the Earth. Permian. One of the biggest mass extinctions in Earth's history happened during the Permian period, which began 290 million years ago. Almost half of all the animals living in the oceans died out, but it led to a burst of growth for trees, insects, and reptiles. Carboniferous The Carboniferous period, which began 362 million years ago. Great land masses collided to form one big continent called Gondwanaland. Devon the Devonian period also called the Age of Fishes, began 408 million years ago. Insects and amphibians first appeared along with corals and ammonites. Great mountain ranges rose up and the first fishes developed. Devonian, Silurian. During the Silurian period, which began 438 million years ago, great shallow seas covered the land. Weird, gigantic, scorpion-like creatures roamed the oceans and may have been the first animals to come out of the water and crawl on land. Silurian, Ordovician. Most of the Earth was underwater during the Ordovician period, which began 510 million years ago. Strange-looking fishes swam in the ancient seas. Cambrian. The Cambrian period was 570 to 510 million years ago, when oceans covered most of the Earth's surface. Below the waves were some of the strangest creatures that ever lived. Most of them looked as if a prehistoric Dr. Frankenstein created them. Extra, extra, read all about it! Junior Dino Finder joins Dr. Rockhound on Fossil Adventure.